Torsten's making a movie. The, the Renaissance occurred to a group of people that were the artists there living at the time, you know, and the artists there working at the time came on to it. And the same with what I call the Renaissance pill, which was the influence of LSD on a culture. In our retrospect, we will look at the 60s as a uh, Renaissance, which it truly is brought about by a chemical um, synthesis of what to that point had affected everyone as a host, but at this different transition point in history had come to people as a medicine. And so then, you know, there's that giant social um, incongruity between the first Renaissance and the second. The second uh, uh, Renaissance becoming illegal, October 6, 1966, Day of the Beast, um, when the first Renaissance didn't become illegal, but became marketed and used to, you know, create weaponry. Um, da Vinci pimping himself as a weapons maker in his last uh, search for a job. Barely mentioning that he painted at the end. To tell me about that. Well, it's just that. It's the Renaissance which comes up with the way of, uh, of explaining and uh, bringing to the uh, social group the new flora and fauna that has been perceived by the visionaries. Um, is always met with a certain reaction. Uh, the ninety percent of the artists during the Renaissance got employed in the fabrication of religious objects, and very, very few of them could ref uh, survive the use of that iconology in their, uh, you know, quest as an artist. Oh, there's very, very few that survived that, some of my favorite, including Benvenuto Cellini, who didn't have to give in to that iconography, his genius being sufficient to uh, let him use pagan gods and goddesses in the creation of his work, paid for by the popes. You know, for now it feels like that this art is not corrupted yet and what can the artists now learn from the renaissance in your opinion to not repeat the same mistake is to realize that the value of the work is in the experiencing of it of the vision and that the big uh, uh, the big social gap created by the society of the spectacle and the warranted uh, uh, place of the the slave worker having to rely on someone else experiencing it and then him um, experiencing it only um, through that other person has been, you know, the great denial of the, the uh, uh, 20th century. And it's, you know, the participation in the thing that makes it valuable and the, the value of art is only in its understanding of its content and the realization of its content and not in its, you know, economic, uh, you know, consideration. So I understand that you have much experience with uh, blood or art and LSD. Um, yeah. You've been there, you've seen it you're kind of a historian of the scene mm -hmm. and the symbols and the images that go onto the blotter um, how do they relate to the LSD and the experience of the trip? Well that varies in many different ways and there's the, f the first image that I know of that someone tried to put on a piece of blotter was of a Captain America type figure that had been altered a bit to become, you know, Captain Lysergic. 
and he had a big L on his shield and he was braving the forces of the astral plane dressed up in his kind of traditional armor little melty as a character named Captain L and so you know right at its inception it's taking the view of the participant and the share of the experience rather than the um, negative approach of uh, the society that surrounds it that's always been feared of that uh, fe afraid of that kind of uh, host especially one that isn't directly connected with the religious institution you know and so there's a lot of fear surrounding the, the substance and then you know Pablo uh, Claudio Naranjo the first recorded uh, drawing of an image on blotter paper which was I understand done in three different designs as he took some blotter paper down to Central America to pass to his uh, curandero which was uh, uh, the word used at that time for shaman and um, he did a series of little drawings on these papers to distinguish the the uh, strength of each one and um, oddly enough some of the drawings would involve like a little moon a crescent moon and star drawings and you know just in that uh, the dream light or, or uh, infinite uh, observation of space um, drawing you, you can already see that the man's of, of suggesting an astral influence or a, a spiritual uh, level that can be attained through the use of the substance. And so your masculine intuition will show you what you're interested in, um, what you've uh, uh, come to do, you know. And it's sometimes there'll be something as simple as a properly done scroll work which was one of the first things that woke me up and when I thought when I saw my first uh, properly scrolled paisley I knew uh, right away I recognized it from somewhere you know if you keep your eye on the prize the magic is gold I know the Escher heads for example um, <laughs> were <coughs> coincidentally um, associated with the distributor of the Escher Prince. <laughs> Church of Ba. Oh, yes. <laughs> Church of Ba. The Discordian Society. Right, the Discordians, giant element of the formulation of uh, Robert Anton Wilson's Illuminatus. That's but, right. Also, in many, many other subcultural adventures in the uh, LSD astral play. That's and right. So, what's after LSD? Paradise. Anton LaVey. Now, there's another one. <laughs> yeah. Um, was... Well, right after LSD, there's an eternity in hell. Yeah. A uh, uh, undetermined amount of time in limbo. And. Uh, five minutes in heaven before you incorporate again. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all. <laughs> that's usually the rigmarole. Um, tell me, uh, can you describe any like amazingly mystical experience in your life that you recall that changed your life? <laughs> no. Not not okay. not in two or three hours. It'll take several weeks. Go easy on him. Totally. Several weeks to explain <laughs> that. To him <laughs> uh, he had an out of body thing. Uh, maybe that, maybe you remember something there. At that, that age, it's a question. coin toss. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know whether to come back or not. It's well, a coin I mean, toss. all two or three years from '67 to uh, let's say '70, <laughs> the whole thing was one genuine uh, mystical experience. It never stopped. Yeah. We're still coming down. <laughs> yeah, trying to integrate the 
it's a mystical yeah. experience. It takes a lifetime, maybe. And then, you know, as you integrate it, you become more and more mystical. <laughs> How do you integrate it? How? Yeah. Uh, the best solution, time. And those that know how to eat, know how to wait. And that's what it's about, is of course, the flood of information is a flood. And if it don't drown you, then it has to be slowly absorbed. The more sponge-like you are, the better, but the harder, <laughs> <laughs> but the harder rock you are, the slower. <laughs> and so then us old hard rocks takes a long time to penetrate. But once you've had it, it's yours forever. What about sensitive people? Um, sensitivity like pain is a limited amount. And uh, you'll get over it. <laughs> you'll get over it. And once the convulsions stop, then you can, you know, focus on what's really happening. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Kitty knows. And that's all, is that, you know, it's, it's still undetermined whether too much is enough. And so take too much and see how sensitive you really are. And then you'll see that that's a um, question you've already answered. Hi, kitty. Okay, you guys. So would you consider yourself a student? Absolutely. And there's no place to learn like Earth. And if you want to learn, come to Earth. <laughs> if you know everything, stay in heaven. <laughs> the corrugated blotter paper this is printed on, but it's before perfs or catalogs, but it's one that hits for 250 mics. Yeah. And so then you end up with the 400 block. And the actual uh, blotter and, um, paper had nothing to do with it. And what's very interesting is that you know, they're spades. And that's very provocative symbol. And the colors are usually there because the seller has a certain destination for the reds or a certain destination for the blacks, and that's how he can control the flow. Or there are different dosages, and so then you want them to have different colors. When I did the artwork was to uh, try to do some of the art designs that I thought would elevate people's and spiritually and consciously so when they did take get high on it their minds would already be attuned to a greater spiritual awareness spiritual consciousness so in, in that sense I definitely was visionary art it's April 19th 1967 <laughs> Timothy Leary himself dropped a sugar cube on my tongue oh, yeah in the middle of New, on New York City <laughs> wow yeah in a peace march down to the peach the, the UN and it started raining and, and the whole the whole march was stone and we, when we got there we all we all hallucinated that the rain had turned to blood uh, and we were all in this big circle <laughs> in the UN uh, uh, parking lot there, holding hands, going, oh, and it was raining blood. <laughs> so that's when I woke up. It sounds heavy. <laughs> yeah, it was it was heavy. Uh, let's, let's give a message to the world. Uh, oh, um, a mess. Do I have to? <laughs> I have no, 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 no. Nobody has to. Uh, well, the, you know, if you go across that bridge and don't get your feet uh, wet, you might look at the ant's body you're walking on. <laughs> it's one of us. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay, that was, that was you. Uh, well, if you're younger than I am, just remember it's revisionist history. You'll never know the real story. <laughs> they changed it. <laughs> That's why it's called his story. His story. Yeah. History. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So to find out yourself, uh, you get to dive into the pool and drink a little bit of the essence and nectar of life to really see for yourself what it's like. Not prevailing for many years. Yeah. It's about life. that, it's advertising for LSD as a life-altering 
life improving experience rather than as something to be tremendously terrified of. And that that's all this visionary is, is, you know, a welcoming of everyone into your vision. Only if you wanted it. Yes. Only if you want to like take house? somebody good with you when yeah. you go. Yeah, uh, they'll help you. <laughs> That's right. Find Some, someone you like. <laughs> someone experienced. Good That's people right. around who can show you and uh, bring you into the circle. Right. Don't take any wooden nickels. Yeah, and uh, don't remember that you're not the only one that's been there. Someone else has been there before and can help explain it to you. You ever seen someone <laughs> seriously hurting themselves on acid? That's not the point. It's that ignorance is guided by itself. And LSD is the most hated drug by everyone who hasn't tried it. And that's what's going on, is that ignorance picks certain ignorant facts to accentuate. And it shows off its ignorance the most, and it's, you know, um, tabooing of LSD. The greatest cure becomes the greatest tabu taboo and thus ensures the propagation of methadone clinics and you know these forever enduring sustainable programs that keep you addicted forever to you know their drug. If you're building the biggest holiday inn in the world and trying to keep your population nice and in jail, then it makes sense to make LSD the only drug you can't use under any circumstance. And that's what's going on.